Hey Toonsters, this is Prince Watercrest, and welcome back to Let's Play Tiny Toon Adventures for the Nintendo Entertainment System. We are on stage 3, and surely the loon is asking us to take Dizzy Devil with us. That is actually a really good choice for this stage, because he can power through a lot of stuff. You can also use Furball for reasons that I'm going to mention later, but for now I'm just going to use... Dizzy Devil here, because, well, it allows me to go through the stage normally, in case you want to do it that way. That, and I can explain to you how to get through it normally. Anyway, these gray owls, when you get close, they dive towards you, and then they dive upwards. You also have those bears, wherever it is that they are, those squirrels, climbing on the walls and ceilings. And these hedgehogs that you can't destroy. Alright, making sure I could get away from him. Also, the reason I'm picking up all these acorns is because the acorns are actually acting as carrots. So the more acorns I collect, the more carrots I'm going to have. Also, I want to wait for these guys to stop looking around before I move past them. Also, on this second platform, be careful for that gray owl. You want to jump as high as you can off that second platform. Also, these squirrels, they do climb underneath these tree platforms we're on, and they do come back. And you have to watch out for that guy as well. By the way, these blocks, you can easily destroy with Dizzy Devil's spin attack. Which is rather good to have. We're done with stage 3-1. Nope, nope. And apparently, you can't stockpile past 9 because I would have gotten an extra life. Sound indicator there if I had less than 9. And believe it or not, the reason I'm playing as Dizzy Devil here is because you can break through these blocks. Now, in stage 3-2, if you're playing as Furball, you can actually skip past all the bats and all the... Ow. All the... Hornets that come out of the hornet's nest and all the other enemies. You can skip a whole lot of the level that way. The hornets are the worst enemies here because they will track you. Thankfully, the screen can only... The game only allows three to be on the screen at any given time. And I can't believe I jumped on two of those right there. I'm going to power through these guys with my spin attack here. Get down here before the bats come at me again. Have at least one, of the, one or two of the bats here. Use my spin. And then try to get away from the hornets. And I can't use my spin attack here, not yet anyway, because it wasn't fully filled up yet. Now we can use that spin attack and get take care of those hornets. Don't know why I hesitated there, I didn't necessarily need to. And yeah, that is a star. Great. Oh, you can destroy those guys! I thought those were indestructible! Apparently you can attack them with the... Dizzy Dazzle spin attack, who knew? And I died again. I should be able to get at least one of my lives back, thankfully. Also, I don't really need to destroy those blocks either. I can just go this way and... Keep going this way and skip a lot of the bats that I would have to deal with otherwise. Let him go past. Still have to deal with the hornets, but... At least now, I can attack all those bats here with the spin attack. And I'm going to wait for it to refill here. There we go. Wait for it to refill again. Bounce off this. Wait here so that the bats don't get me. And I'm going to go this way. 
and go through all these blocks. We saw a door here earlier, and this is how you get to it. So I can at least get one of my lives back. I'm about to say, if I completed the stage with the 33 carats, I would have gotten a bonus round. There actually is a bonus round that you can get at the end of every round, but you've got to be very, very lucky to get it. You have to have a certain number of carats, and that it basically has to be a multiple 11s. So you've got to have 11, 22, 33, 44, etc., etc., in order to get the bonus stage at the end of every level. Like, when you beat the boss of that stage, you've got to have, like, any number of carats that's a multiple 11. And once you beat the boss, instead of going straight to the next stage, you get the bonus stage where you have to deal with Doug Vader, and if you can survive long enough, you can get a 3-up. Also, here, all you have to do, just take your time, jump from one platform to the other. You'll eventually make it just in time for the door leading to stage 3-3 to show up. And Elmiros hopefully won't catch you. I almost jumped there. The bats here have a bit of an interesting pattern. They go up, down, up, and then straight up or straight down, regardless of whether you're above them or below them. Apparently that guy went down. I don't know why. Apparently he did that when he respawned. But I do want to jump my way down the stairs, so that way these guys don't give me trouble on the way to the door. There are two rows that you can pick to pick from in the second and third sections of these stages. If you're furball, you can take the high road, but if you're playing as Dizzy Devil, you're going to have to take the, low, take the low one every time. And you will have to keep pressing A in order to not only swim, but also get out of the water, too. And these things, you can actually avoid with a spin attack. And there's nothing here. Wonderful invincibility with the spin attack. I'm gonna wait for this thing to refill here. Take some time. And believe it or not, just wait for this guy to go away. And then just walk your way across. As long as you don't jump or swim, he won't hurt you. Well, the fish won't, but apparently I mistimed that terribly. And now I gotta do this whole section over again. I'm actually going to keep on my desk then because this game can be a little challenging, but once you get used to it, it is a very fun game, I will have to admit. And that was terrible. I don't know how I managed to miss that jump and end up all the way in the water. I'm going to take care of this guy with my spin attack though. And I managed to land on that guy. Awesome. Thought I was going to die there. So here we are taking the low road again. Instead of the high road like we could with Furball. Believe it or not, Furball has a rather interesting ability. He can climb walls and he can also climb ceilings too. We could have skipped a lot of this section, a lot of stage 3 too. And even a lot of this section as well. You can actually go all the way up there with Furball and actually walk above the ceiling. Wait for this thing to go down. Then we can jump down here. At least having the spin attack has the benefit of giving you invincibility. This works so far against everything we've used it against. Now, let's wait for this guy Actually, we have the spin attack, so we have no excuse not to use it now. There we go. Managed to get under the guy, but... Well, we hit the, hit the guy behind him on the way forward. There's a heart here. You want it. And now it's time to take on the boss, who is actually easier than you think. Is this one werewolf guy from one episode? Also, those things are going right. So this guy's going to show up from the left. Watch the uh, ceiling. If... The things there go right. He's going to appear on the left. If they go left, 
He's gonna appear on the right. By the way, you can actually leap into the side of the screen and end up on the other end. Kinda like in the final boss battle of Animaniacs. But that's only if you're using Buster or Furball. It, it seems to work best that way because that way at least you can do a running jump and wrap from one end of the screen to the other. Also, I forget what episode that Wolf boss is from, but he is from the television series. Which I should mention the memories I have of it from next time. Where we'll probably be playing as Furball. Until then, this is Prince Watercrest. Take care, stay safe, and thanks for watching!